Hi, Dave Bearing, TriStar Plastics. Uh, welcome to video number three on why metal bearings fail. fail. Um, this one we're going to talk about really four different facets of failure. Uh, first of all, more detail on contamination, on corrosion, uh, overloading, and vernelling. Um, while these sometimes can be considered minor compared to the lubrication failures, um, you know, the percentages of failures brought on by these types of uh, problems are less, obviously, but still worthy of consideration, especially as we, uh, as we consider uh, the solutions that TriStar has in terms of our um, self-lubricating materials, our composites, and so forth. So let's take a look at these four facets of failure in metal bearings. First of all, contamination. Um, we, we talked already about uh, how improperly maintained bearings can become contaminated. The seals can fail. Uh, there could be occasions where there are no seals at all. Um, maintenance uh, is, is lax, and so there's poor monitoring. Um, the debris uh, contamination can get captured in the grease and become a lapping compound, as we talked about before. And then uh, finally, the incorrect lubrication um, for the environment can lead to premature wear and failure. And as I mentioned earlier too, contamination can be affected by water, uh, simple little water. And um, so it's, it's quite critical that um, contaminated bearings be fixed, otherwise they're going to fail. So uh, contamination, like I said, comes in a lot of forms, um, but we're mostly concerned with rolling met, uh, element bearings about hard contaminants, grit, dirt, um, anything that's, that's abrasive to the touch, once it gets into that lubrication, now becomes, uh, as I've mentioned many times before, a lapping compound. So contamination is uh, number three on the list of problems. Um, after that, corrosion. Now corrosion, uh, like contamination, can be in many different forms, but the most typical corrosion is going to be from either chemical exposures or moisture exposures. It's, it's all whatever the environment surrounding the, uh, the bearing is. And uh, usually corrosion shows up in pitting and uh, uh, rusting, um, and, and all of this leads to what you would consider a a little bit longer process of fatiguing, but um, depending on how bad the, the corrosion can get, um, you, you've seen how rust can build up on steel. Just imagine if you're inside of a, a, a bearing and you've got outer race, inner race cage and balls, uh, and they're all running against each other, and now all of a sudden you start to pick up debris from, from rust. Um, clickety, clickety, click and now you're going to introduce the potential for Brunelling and so it's just this chain of events that ultimately leads to failure. Um, as I talked about earlier, the corrosion comes usually as visualized by these red and brown spots and that's, that's kind of a no-brainer. I mean rust is red and brown so that would be a clear-cut indicator that you've got uh, a uh, corrosion problem going on um, in the bearing. Um, and as I mentioned just a minute ago, the, the corrosion can lead to this vibration effect and that vibration then starts to break down the tolerances. You start to lose your, your preload and basically the bearing goes bye-bye. So corrosion is something that uh, just like contamination has to be paid attention to. Um, even with good greasing, sometimes uh, you can get uh, corrosive uh, failures, and uh, but it's usually it's usually poor maintenance that causes the corrosion failure, or just an environment that is just so bad uh, it, it can't be avo avoided. Now, obviously, if you've got a bearing that's submerged in water, you know, there's not a lot of ways around that, uh, other than going to a stainless steel bearing and buy a little bit more time. But the fact of the matter is, um, you know, corrosion is going to cause premature failure because of um, this, this wear factor that's going to take place um, from the corroding features. So, uh, and, and by the way, this can happen in, in gases too. Uh, there's gases that will affect certain metals and um, 
So uh, it's not just a fluid situation. Uh, there's, there's environments where especially inert gases can cause real problems with, uh, with rolling elements. So, you know, corrosion is kind of an obvious thing. So um, you'll, you'll know it when you see it, uh, and most people do know it when they see it. Um, excessive loading. Now, excessive loading is kind of interesting because you wouldn't think really excessive loading is going to apply to a, a rolling element if it was properly selected. But I think where the problems really come in is that sometimes in real world applications, uh, things happen and it may exceed the design parameters of a piece of equipment. There may be some kind of mechanical failure that causes a um, cascading effect to uh, other components, including the bearings. Uh, it could be a simple um, uh, either misalignment or it could be uh, uh, like a, a cantilevered load on a bearing that's causing a complete shift in how those balls and races are, are, um, are functioning together. So all of these things can cause um, what's visualized in this particular picture is a spalling failure. You can see that it's, it's basically churning up the metal and um, uh, that obviously is going to lead to a premature fatiguing and failure. Um, excessive loading, as I, as I also mentioned earlier, can come from fits, tight fits. If you um, miss the hardware call out on, on your press fit and you've got a little bit too much squeeze, um, even though it's metal, it's still got to compress. It's got to go somewhere. Um, and even if you were to freeze fit, a metal bearing. Once it expands back up, you've still got a limited amount of tolerance between all the components. So uh, freeze fitting is not going to necessarily solve your problem and ultimately those tight fits are going to lead to premature failure. So um, those are the, or, I'm sorry, there's one more, true and false Brunelling. Um, now Brunelling Again, it's, the description of Brunelling is really um, little indentations or dents. Um, these are usually indicated either in um, kind of a, a, a single row around the race. That is what's classified as true Brunelling. And that is usually more uh, because of the uh, elastic limit of the material has been exceeded. And so it shows up with these little divots. Um, usually kind of in line with where the ball locations are. False Brunelling, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, is uh, little depressions that um, are oval shape and usually are running axially across the face of the race. And this really comes primarily from vibration or swaying uh, between the balls and the races or the cylinders and the races and the needles of the races. You know, everything we're talking about it doesn't really matter if it's a ball bearing or any other form of a rolling element, the problems are the same. Um, but this false Brunelling is uh, very common in uh, non-rotating applications. And again, as I mentioned earlier, um, ball bearings or rolling element bearings are best suited for full rotation. Um, when you put them into a situation where they're more oscillatory, um, it's just not the best use of lubrication and really it's uh, kind of overkill quite frankly. So um, that is what the Brunelling is all about and again you know if you've ever heard a clicking in your your bearing or um, you sometimes can even visualize there's a, there's a thumping that takes place in the bearing and that's that's almost 99% of the time that's from Brunelling. So those are the main features, uh, the main factors of, of um, failure modes in uh, outside of lubrication. Now there, again, there's a lot of other things, but these are the ones that we um, picked as the most predominant. And uh, so I hope it gives you a little bit better picture of why metal bearings fail. Uh, that's the whole purpose of this little, this little series is so that you will understand a little bit better why we now have solutions to offer to you. And our solutions can counter everything I just talked about in the failure modes. So stand by, video number four is to follow. And it's very, very simply 
why metal bearings fail, and what are TriStar solutions to those failure modes. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.